Hello folks, welcome to the Age of Asparagus and Phase 2, Part 6 of our 3D top-down shooter. By the end of this video, we'll be able to manually generate a nav mesh for our level generation tool and drop the level into our game so we can finally play it. Okay folks, let's get started on creating that navigation mesh. So first maybe let's go back and look at our original level and see the structure here. So we have all our ground and obstacles underneath a navigation mesh instance, which itself is underneath a navigation node. So let's try and recreate that structure here in our level generator. So here we have a spatial node we're calling level. Let's actually just make this our navigation. So back in our level generator, we'll go into our script and right here we have our level variable. So I'm going to make that a navigation node instead. And I'll also create a nav mesh instance variable. And this will be a navigation mesh instance node. Okay, let's see, we're getting some errors here. And part of that is because down where we add level down here, we're creating a new spatial node. That's not really going to work anymore. This is going to have to be a navigation. We can still use the level variable name. That's fine. However, the name as it appears in the scene, let's call it navigation. And I'm going to clear the errors here. Control S. See, everything looks like it's working okay. And the only difference there now is if we click on the map and then we generate a level, we now have all of our obstacles in the ground being generated under the navigation. It's calling it navigation two because the navigation, I assume, still existed in the tree somehow when we created the next one. But if you generate the level again, now we'll get it'll disappear. It seems like every <laughs> it's toggling back and forth. So, okay, so we have navigation, just like here, and now we need to create the navigation mesh instance and make our ground and all the obstacles a child of the mesh instance instead of the navigation itself. So back to the level generator and back to the script. So here we've done everything we need for the navigation. Now let's add the nav mesh. So we'll take the nav mesh instance variable and we'll create a new nav mesh instance dot new. We'll add it as a child to the level, oops, level, which is our navigation node. And just so it'll show up in our tree here while we're editing, let's make the nav mesh instances or owner to be uh, the map generator here. Let's see what that looks like. He doesn't seem to appear anywhere uh, because I didn't save it. So let's control S and we'll regenerate there. Now we have our nav mesh instance. And as we might expect, the navigation mesh instance is actually missing its nav mesh resource. So we're going to have to create that too. And we'll just do that. We don't need access to that for anything. So we'll just create it right here and add it directly. So we'll go nav mesh instance stuff here. And actually, you know what, we can probably just punch this right in. So we'll take our nav mesh instance and we'll set its nav mesh to a new navigation mesh resource. Navigation, oops, forgot the equals, equals navigation mesh. And the resources here, I think the resources show up in yellow. And we'll create a new one. Now this is going to have all the default settings of a navigation mesh, which we might have to deal with later. But for now, let's just see if we can get our structure settled. So I'm going to regenerate the level. I've saved it. Uh, it's not complaining anymore. It, the navigation mesh is showing up here. Um, I can even bake the nav mesh, which is not going to do anything because if you remember, obstacles are based on children of the nav mesh instance. So we need to move all of these obstacles and the ground as children of the nav mesh instance instead of children of the navigation node. So let's go back to the map. Let's go find where we add the ground right here. And instead of adding it as a child of the level, we'll add it as a child of the nav mesh instance. As well, when we 
create obstacles, which is in our method create obstacles at here. Instead of adding obstacles as children of the level, add them as children of the nav mesh instance. Let's uh, clear these errors. Control S here. Good, it looks like it's working. So let's go back to the map and regenerate. And it looks like we're getting the structure we want now. That should map our level, a navigation, nav mesh instance with a navigation resource and all our ground and obstacles. And that is what we have here. Pretty cool. And now if we click the navigation mesh instance and we bake the nav mesh, I'm gonna hit seven here and select the nav mesh so it's kind of highlighted. Nope, it doesn't seem to matter here. Uh, you should be able to see a half decent nav mesh just with the default settings. And now I really wanted to be able to automate the generation of this navigation mesh. And it looks like it might be possible if you really wanted to hack away at manually creating a mesh and then saving it in the navigation mesh resource under its geometry somehow kind of. But you know what? I believe Godot 4 is planning to rework a lot of how navigation works. So I think we'll just stick with what we have now. It's a little annoying that once we have a level we like, we're actually going to have to click this navigation mesh instance, and then we're going to have to click bake nav mesh. But it's going to work. This bake nav mesh process function is just not accessible in GDScript in the current version of Godot. Okay, so we have a level here. Why don't we try to use it? So I've baked the nav mesh. I'm just going to hit uh, in the map here, I'm just going to hit generate level again so I get it back to the navigation. Um, I'm not going to call it asparagus, let's call it level one. And maybe we'll simplify level one a little bit for testing. Let's make it a, what was our default, 11 by 11? Let's go back to that shape. Um, I'm going to create the, I'm going to reduce the max height of the obstacles a little bit. Maybe we'll go down to 2.4. And uh, let's go back to our, our blue and red. I liked that. Whoopsie. And which way is going to be forward here? It'll be like that. And uh, generate the level. Now let's save it. It should be level one, and it should show up in our generated levels over here. So uh, click Save. That did not work. And that's, of course, when we save it, we need to make sure everything is actually owned by the navigation node. So let's go back and fix that up. That's going to be in our save level method up at the top here somewhere. Uh, set save level, right? We called it that. Here it is, save level. So to start, we're going to tell the navigation mesh instance its owner right before we save is, whoops, is now the level variable, which is this navigation node, remember? And then instead of getting all the children of the level, because the level now only has one child, the nav mesh instance. We're going to get all the children of the nav mesh instance. And we'll set that child's owner to the level. If I save that, that should work. I'm going to generate the level again. Make sure after you generate the level, you do have to click the nav mesh instance. Since this is a new nav mesh instance, a new navigation mesh resource, it does not have its nav mesh baked. Now it's baked. Oh, wow. That's neat. Nothing would be able to get up there, but it's kind of cool that uh, if it did get up there, it'd at least be able to climb a few stairs. Let's stick with that. Oh, let's not stick with that. That navigation mesh too is really annoying. So I'm just going to generate it again. Click nav mesh instance, bake it. Let's go save it as level one. We already have level one here. It's just going to save over it, but I'm going to delete those two to empty out our generated levels. Let's save that level. And this is causing a problem because when we regenerate the level, uh, some uh, there, there's some sort of disconnect happening between our navigation mesh instance and our navigation resource. Our navigation resource, I don't think our navigation resource is being deleted, but that's not really going to be a problem. Let's just ignore that for now unless it pops up again. So let's try and use this level now. Let's go back to the level. Uh, let's fix up a few things like this weird uh, random obstacle that... I place somehow. We don't need that enemy in the center because they're going to spawn. And this navigation here, delete. That's a little scary. And let's drag in level one under the level. Oh, that's looking promising. That's really cool. Let's move our player out of the way of these obstacles. Though. Just 
obviously we'll have to script the spawning of our player properly. Um, you can see the navigation mesh a little bit. It's a little clear on here. Okay, let's run it. How's it? Is this going to work? Oh, the lighting sure makes a difference. It went, made the colors go all pastel. Well, that's cool. They seem to be navigating well, right? They're really slow. We should probably speed them up, right? Okay, let's kill this and see what happens when we have a bazillion of them. Are they going to try and come find me? They're so cramped, they can't even move. Oh, that was just a little lag. <laughs> I kind of like how squishy they look. Okay, let's clean a few things up here before we finish up. First, we want to be able to handle this navigation, navigation 2 thing, because if you accidentally save your level as navigation 2, which you could test out here by changing the name of that, and then you run it, your game's going to crash as soon as the enemy appears, because our enemies are looking for a node called navigation. So let's stop that and go fix that. We're going to delete this level. Let's go back to our level generator scene and in our script I'm going to expand that there and clear these errors in our script where we delete all the objects in our level that should be down under our generate map here so when we clear our map we set all the nodes in the map to queue free. Um, actually, this says for node in get children, and really the map actually only has one child. So this loop is kind of meaningless now, since we're actually just deleting this, so it's just gonna delete everything under it. But instead of queue freeing our navigation, let's just free it directly, because what's happening is we're queuing it to free, which means it's uh, doing a bit of cleanup here and should delete itself by the end of the frame. But before that happens, we're trying to create a new navigation node and give it the same name, which is why that little two is appearing. So instead of queuing it to be freed, let's just free it instantly, and then the name will be available to us. Now, it's probably not a good practice if this is actually part of your game and things are moving around and interacting. You definitely want to queue free, but for this tool script, it's not going to matter. There's no interactions. This is just... So let's control S, save that. We'll generate some levels here, and you can see now it's sticking with just the navigation name. The other issue you can see here is this uh, nm.linked. This is a problem. This isn't a GD script error. This is an underlying error in Godot uh, that we're creating. And I assume that's navigation mesh linked. So we have a little problem there. It's not clear to me what is causing this problem. It might be the result of a bug based on some bug reports in Godot that are going to be fixed in Godot 4. But we can solve this and another problem we have, which is what if your navigation mesh resource here, when you bake it, and you import it into your level, what if it doesn't work? What if you actually have to go in and fiddle with all these settings again like we did the first time we tried? Uh, I seem to get lucky and it just all worked out, but it might not for you for some reason or a slightly different version of Godot you're using. Who knows, right? So that's going to be a real pain in the butt. So what we're going to do is instead of generating this navigation mesh resource in our code, we'll save this one as a template. And that way you can just adjust this template and our level generator will use that. So let's start by, let's clear this, bake. <laughs> now, okay, so we can save it with a bake or without a bake. If we save it without a bake, uh, this error keeps happening. So let's try saving it with a bake, which is going to kind of be annoying because the bake's going to show up when our, which is going to be annoying because a bad bake is going to show up, but the error is gone. And if we at least make it something obvious, like let's go to our map and we'll have no obstacles, obstacle density zero, generate this level, and let's just bake it like this. There we go. <laughs> and let's save this navigation mesh resource, and we'll save it in our level generator. And I'm going to call it nav mesh template dot tres text resource so now let's go back to our script and use it so we'll go up to the top and we're going to add a new export variable we can call it nav mesh template and this will be a navigation mesh resource oops tamapulti template and then we'll go way down here to our add level 
and right here where we create the nav mesh instance instead of creating a new one from scratch we're going to use our nav mesh template and we'll duplicate it you don't want to use it directly otherwise when you rebake it each of your levels will be using the same bake because that bake i believe is saved actually right in that resource so by duplicating it, it'll create a copy of it with all the settings we want, and then when we bake it, it will be specific to the level we generated. So let's try that. Uh, let's add some obstacles. Oops, <laughs> non-existent function duplicate uh, because we didn't actually drop our nav mesh template in there. Good, let's add some obstacles and we'll generate a level. You can see there when we generated the level that we have that nav mesh, which is going to be weird when you change the size of it, for example, and then bake, because <laughs> you can see that's the one that was saved with the resource, but that's okay. In a way, it's a little bit of a reminder visually, because it looks so bad, uh, that you need to actually bake the nav mesh specifically for this level. Our error is gone, so that's nice. Let's save this. We have level one. I'm going to delete that. And we'll save this one. Sure, let's save this as level one. Is it baked? Yep. Yeah. Let's change the seed. We'll generate it. Let's bake it. And we'll save it as level two. Okay, we have a couple levels. Let's just make sure they work now. So we'll drop in level one. And let's play. And the hope is, of course, that the enemies start moving because there is a navigation mesh in there somewhere, and they do. Okay, well, that works well. Good. Let's uh, delete that one and drop in level two. Hopefully we get the... <laughs> okay. <laughs> yes, stealth mode. But they are coming. Excellent. And it obviously it appears like they're using the proper nav mesh specific to this level. So if you didn't get as lucky as I did and your navigation meshes are working nicely and your enemies are following along, then you can go to your nav mesh template and if you double click it, it'll open up here in the inspector. And you can try manipulating some of these nav mesh settings just like we did when we first did this uh, quite a few videos ago. You can, for example, change the radius of your agents, which will be our enemies, to something a little higher or increase the height to, I think we had it somewhere around 0.8 before. And after you've made these changes, you can click save and that will save your template so that in your level generator, now when you generate a level and then bake it, you'll see that the new height here has taken into account and my larger agents as well I obviously made them a little too large because now they can't pass through these little sections and I made it a little too high because now they, they'll be able to travel right over top of or try to travel right over top of some of these low obstacles. So you may have to fiddle with a bunch of things. The lowest height of your obstacles, you may want to increase that a bit if it's not working. Uh, you have a bunch of parameters to play around with to get it to work. Uh, in my case, it seemed to be working, so I'm going to reset those to the defaults. Good luck, I hope you are navigating around. This might be the last video in phase two. Um, we're gonna move on to spawning next and we'll just see where it goes.